Are you ready for a great adventure? Today on The World is Yours. We're off to the Yucatan Peninsula to explore the great ancient Mayan pyramids. Along the way, we'll discover so much more about this amazing lost civilization. Then we'll travel to Asia, where we'll find ourselves in Seoul, South Korea, a bustling city full of history and culture. Finally, we're going to a string of some of the most beautiful islands in the Mediterranean, all off the coast of Spain. It'll be quite obvious why so many people flock to Ibiza to vacation. Grab your sunblock and shades. It's time for another unforgettable adventure. and the world is yours. Ready to see something really cool? The Yucatan Peninsula extends into the Gulf of Mexico, separating it from the Caribbean Sea, and was home to the Mayan Empire. Many of the inhabitants descend from the Maya. They continue to speak Mayan languages and honor the traditions of their ancient culture. Yucatan is also one of the 32 states of Mexico located in the northern part of the peninsula. The region was first called Mayab, likely from the Mayan ma ya meaning a few. Though the timetable of the earliest human presence on the peninsula is not fully agreed upon, evidence suggests it was somewhere between 10,000 and 12,000 years ago. Wow, the first Maya moved to Yucatan around the year 250. From that period through the 6th century, the Maya developed cities and formed a union between the Maya tribes of Itza, Sius, and Cacomes. When the union of the tribes ended in the 12th century, the Maya returned to small settlements, which lasted until the Spanish explorers arrived in this new world in the 16th century. The Spanish discovered their incredible cities and in them some of the most impressive and now ancient structures in the world. One of these ancient cities was Uxmal. It is widely considered one of the most important sites of the Maya civilization. Located in the Puk region, Uxmal is one of the best representations of Mayan architecture in this part of the Yucatan Peninsula. The buildings here are large and decorated in a very unique way with roads known as sock bays that connect them to one another. This Puk style of architecture is recognizable by their smooth, low walls and detailed panels illustrating the Maya's wonderful stories. Snakes, often two-headed, were made into masks, meant to represent the rain god, Chak. The Uxmal site is very well preserved, better than most other Mayan ruins. The buildings at Uxmal are made with well-cut stones, which means that the pieces fit together and don't require any sort of material to glue them in place, which might wear away over time. Pretty impressive, right? Remember, they built these buildings 1,500 years ago. The name Chichen Itza comes from the Yucatec Mayan phrase meaning at the mouth of the water shaman's well. From around the 7th century through the 13th century, this city was a big part of the Maya civilization. Chichen Itza also demonstrates the Puk style of architecture, as well as some other styles of the region seen in parts of central Mexico, which may show a mix of different cultures stemming from Mexico infusing here with that of more traditional Maya. Chichen Itza is one of the largest Maya cities. And it appears in lots of literary works of the time period. At the very center of the ruins, we'll find El Castillo, also known as Temple of the Kukulkan. This pyramid was built to honor the feathered serpent god, very similar to Quetzalcoatl, a very important god to the Aztecs and other Mexican cultures. A feathered serpent sculpture found at the bottom of the pyramid resembles ones we found in Uxmal. Another well-known site is the Great Ball Court, a popular game as well as a ritual throughout Mesoamerica. 
This sport is similar to modern games like racquetball and football or soccer. One of the largest grounds ever built for playing this sport that historians call the Mesoamerican ball game. With walls around it almost 30 feet tall. The city is located next to two large sinkholes. One of these sinkholes, the Cenote Sagrado, known as the Sacred Well, is the most famous in Chichen Itza, a well from which the name of the city gets its name. Because Chichen Itza had its own port, the Isla Cerritos, the Itza Maya were able to trade with other cultures in Central America, which made it a very wealthy and powerful city in the region. Now that we've seen some of the most visited ruins in Yucatan, we'll travel to the Isla Olbox, an island off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula in the modern state of Quintana Roo. Isla Olbox is not as frequently visited by tourists. At only 26 miles long and a little bit over a mile wide, the island isn't particularly large. But it is home to a vast number of animals, like flamingos, pelicans, and even whale sharks. One of the biggest draws to the island is swimming with these amazing sharks, which can grow to be over 40 feet long. But don't worry, they may seem scary, but whale sharks feed mostly on plankton. People aren't on the whale shark menu. With an economy built around fishing, it's no wonder many of its local dishes feature its biggest export, lobster. And if you're feeling adventurous, there's no better place to do some kiteboarding than the beaches of Isla Olbox. With its vast beaches, shallow waters, and consistent wind, Isla Olbox is a kiteboarder's paradise. Jump on your board and catch a big gust of wind. These beaches are perfect for catching waves year round. We can't stay that long though, because it's time to head to our next destination. But first, let's test your world knowledge. One of the biggest and most influential cities in Asia, Seoul is the birthplace of what popular music genre? A, K-pop. B, jazz. C, country. D, rock and roll. The answer coming up when we return to the world is yours. We're back. Let's find out the answer to our question. One of the biggest and most influential cities in Asia, Seoul is the birthplace of what popular music genre? A, K-pop. B, jazz. C, country. D, rock and roll. If you said A, K-pop, you're right. K-pop, short for Korean pop or Korean popular music, is huge all over the world. The genre is influenced by all kinds of other music. K-pop pulls from it all, but when the K-pop idol culture began, it resulted in the spread of groups that can be compared to boy bands in the United States and Great Britain. K-pop's growing global popularity, in part due to sharing music and videos online through social media, has been referred to as the Korean wave. K-pop now has a huge global audience and influence on other kinds of pop music today. The city of Seoul is the capital of the Republic of Korea, known most commonly as South Korea, as well as the largest in the country and one of the most powerful economically in the entire world. Seoul is a major city for culture, entertainment, and research as well as education, media, and finance in Asia. Surrounded by mountains and situated on the Han River, Seoul's location made it instrumental in the foundation of early Korean civilization. First founded in the year 18 BCE, 
Seoul was made the capital during the reign of the Yoseon Dynasty. Seoul wasn't always a major global city, though. The end of the Korean War in 1953 marked the beginning of rapid economic growth in the city, referred to as the Miracle on Han River, and led to South Korea becoming a developed country and Seoul becoming one of the highest valued cities in the world, behind just Tokyo, New York, and Los Angeles. A busy and bustling global city needs great public transportation to keep its many people moving along. And Seoul has an impressive system, no doubt. If we're going to explore as much of Seoul as we can, we're going to need to master this transit system. And we'll start at the Express Bus Terminal Station. The Express Bus Terminal is the meeting place of three major subway lines in Seoul. Just under the Gangnam Bus Terminal, the station has many stores and restaurants, as well as hubs for internet access. It's actually one of the most popular places to access the internet in all of the Seoul Metropolitan Subway System. Also one of the most crowded stations, the Express Bus Terminal connects these major subway lines with 60 local bus routes. That's a lot of buses. Central City is also the location of major shopping malls, hotels, a movie theater complex, and an amusement park. It's no wonder the station that services Central City is one of the most crowded. Next stop, Hongdae. We'll catch a train and head to this great neighborhood full of art, music, and food. This part of the city, in western Seoul, is right next to Hongdae University, one of the top fine arts universities in South Korea, and the namesake of the neighborhood. Hongdae is also the center of the independent music scene in Seoul. Some of the most famous bands from Seoul got their start right here in Hongdae. If we're lucky, we'll get to see the next up-and-coming superstars play at one of these cool venues. And we can't forget to visit the Hongdae Art Market Free Market, where we'll be able to see and even buy crafts made by students and artists in the neighborhood. A great part of town to visit to get a sense of the emerging culture of the city. Before we leave Seoul for our next location, we can't miss checking out a baseball game. Though football and soccer are also major sports in South Korea, baseball is also hugely popular. Home to two of Seoul's professional baseball teams, the LG Twins and the Doosan Bears. We're gonna catch a game at none other than the Jamsil Baseball Stadium. The park, part of the Seoul Sports Complex, holds more than 25,000 spectators and even hosted events during the 1988 Summer Olympics. It's a good thing we've already mastered the train and subway system because we can take the subway right to the stadium. The field and facilities were renovated in 2007, making it one of the best baseball stadiums in South Korea. No matter where in the world you're enjoying this pastime, it's always one Two, three strikes, you're out at a Jamsil baseball game. During the seventh inning stretch, we can check our itinerary for our final destination. But first, let's test your world knowledge. Ibiza, an island in the Mediterranean Sea, is part of which European country? A, Greece. B, Italy. C, France. D, Spain. The answer coming up when we return to The World is Yours. We're back. Let's find out the answer to our question. Ibiza, an island in the Mediterranean Sea, is part of which European country? A. Greece. B. Italy. C. France. D. 
Spain. If you said D, Spain, you're right. Ibiza is an autonomous community of Spain. Autonomous community means that, even though Ibiza is part of Spain, it has its own government that runs the island, under some guidelines from the Spanish constitution. Ibiza, located off the east coast of Spain, is the third largest island of the Balearic Islands, drawing huge numbers of tourists each year. About 220 square miles, the island of Ibiza is about 10 times the size of Manhattan and has a peak height of just over 1,500 feet above sea level. A part of the Balearic Islands, which all share a capital city of Palma, Ibiza is also included in a unique subgroup of islands called the Pitiusis. The Pine Islands, as the Greeks referred to them, consists of just two full islands, Ibiza and Formentera, the smaller of the two Pine Islands. Just four miles south of Ibiza, Formentera is just 12 miles long, with a population of over 12,000 people. There's evidence that the island was inhabited by people dating back nearly 4,000 years. The Carthaginians occupied Formentera before the Romans took it over. And numerous other empires controlled the island until it was eventually conquered by the Catalans. In the 12th century, Formentera was a popular destination for the hippies of the 1960s. Famous singer and icon of the era, Joni Mitchell, wrote her famous album, Blue, while on the island. And music legend Bob Dylan once lived on Formentera as well. Who knew? Though the island is small, it not only draws tourists to its sandy white beaches, it's also a stop for many windsurfers and water sport enthusiasts. Let's keep sailing. Now we'll head to another small island off the southwest of Ibiza. Es Vedra is an uninhabited island and part of the Caladort Nature Reserve. It is home to a type of Ibizan wall lizard, as well as the endangered Eleanor's falcon. Most notably, perhaps, Es Vedra is believed to be the mythical island home of the sirens that Odysseus and his crew sailed past on their voyage in Homer's Odyssey. And Odysseus had to strap himself to his ship to avoid falling for their alluring and mesmerizing song. It is also the setting for one of Ibiza's well-known tales called The Giant of Es Vedra. As well as the holy island of Ibiza's patron goddess, Tanit. We have one last stop to make on our tour of Ibiza and the surrounding islands. But first, let's test your world knowledge. Although the English and Spanish name is Ibiza, what is the official Catalan name for the town of Ibiza? A. Mallorca B. Menorca C. Ibiza D. Ibiza The answer coming up when we return to The World is Yours! We're back. Let's find out the answer to our question. Although the English and Spanish name is Ibiza, what is the official Catalan name for the town of Ibiza? A, Mallorca. B, Menorca. C, Ibiza. D, Ibiza. If you said C, Ibiza, you're right. Did you think that it was Ibiza? Logical guess, but no. Ibiza is the Catalan name for the island of Ibiza and is the official name of the town of Ibiza too. And with a population of almost 151,000, 
This capital city has more people than any other in the Pine Islands. Locals refer to the town as Villa del Visa, often shortened to just Villa. The town is divided into two parts. Dalt Villa, the old town section, translated is Upper Town, and the modern section, known as Example, the extension. Located at the top of Dalt Villa, we'll find one of the major sites in the city. The Cathedral of Santa Maria de Ivisa, built in the 14th century. Well, that wraps up our adventure for today. We got to see some of the amazing Maya ruins and pyramids and explore the Yucatan Peninsula. We walked through the amazing Hongdae district before heading to Jamsil Stadium to enjoy a Korean baseball game in Seoul, South Korea. And we sailed our way across the Balearic Islands, soaking up the sun in Ibiza, Formentera, and Esvedra. Thanks for joining us on our trip around the world. There are many more adventures to come. Until next time, the world is waiting and the world is yours.